guys, it's Richie from Fred Chunkies and we are back. Very, very excited to be sat in this seat today. Um, we're going to be doing a guitar lesson. Um, a Jimi Hendrix, have you ever been to Electric Ladyland? Okay. Um, worth noting, this is not going to be note for note. Um, this is going to be my loose interpretation of it. And if you follow it through, you'll probably be able to pick your own little bits over the top of it. I've done a Jimi Hendrix guitar lesson um, before. Um, which I'll link up here. Uh, you can come back to that and reference that and you'll see what I mean. That that lesson will really apply here in terms of when you hit a bad chord, what to play over it, okay? Uh, first things first, you're gonna want a Strat. Um, I mean, you can play on it, other things, but a Strat is pretty good for it. Um, you wanna tune down half a step. My guitar, I'm gonna be using a guitar build Strat. It's a lightweight Swamp Bash. Um, some new pickups I'm trying. Uh, the Uni Vibe is going to be the Arjun Ziano Gypsy Vibe. This is the big box uh, faithful recreation. Um, and I'm gonna be going into my vibe reverb. Usually I will play this with a wah, but for today's lesson, I thought I'd just keep it kinda, you know, more pure. Um, so I'm gonna play it through once, and then we're gonna break it down, okay? It's gonna be something like this. If I can remember to turn the vibe on. Right, here we go. Okay guys, um, so yeah, I missed that a bit in the middle. I never really do that because when I'm playing that bit on my own, it kind of sounds to me. You know, with the, uh, the bit where, that bit, I, I, it doesn't work for me personally. Um, it's very easy to work out, so if you want to add that in, go somewhere else and maybe find that. Didn't mean to sound like that, but you know what I mean. Um, okay, so for the most of this, um, this guitar lesson, we're going to be wanting to play our chords with a thumb on the top. It's going to give us a lot more freedom with our fingers down here to play through the scale, okay? Um, so instead of playing an A, a major like that, we're going to want to grab it with our thumb. It's really important for the, any any time you're trying to do these Hendrix stuff. That thumb needs to be there, okay? Um, if you're playing like here, more traditional, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to get that bass note ringing with the rest of it, and that's what Hendrix is so good at when you really examine him, is he kind of plays all of it, you know? Even the percussion sometimes is amazing. Um, so yeah, you want to get your thumb wrapped around, okay? So let's talk and let's get into it. We're going to begin on, uh, sorry, I'm going to call it as I see it. I'm going to forget about the half tune in. I'm going to refer to it as if it were in standard. So if that's difficult, just follow my fingers on the fretboard, okay? So we're going to begin on A major. We're going to hit the thick string and an up break. And a little slap after. Oh, sorry, the first bit. You want a bit of reverb on the tank as well, because um, it kind of gives it a bit more of a room feeling, especially for this track, okay? So, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to slide up to C sharp minor, okay? Yeah. Now we're going to play just notes from the C sharp minor pentatonic. Just walking down. Okay, so we're gonna go 12, 9, 11, 9. We're gonna actually ha end there on the C sharp, okay? So. And I'm gonna slide then from the 9 to the 11 on the A string. And we're kind 
of um, like kind of you're thinking G G uh, sorry G sharp minor perhaps yeah G sharp minor you're thinking G sharp minor you're kind of shelling it out okay so from there we're gonna hammer on holding the bar across from the 11 to the 12, 14th and then we're going to catch the 12 on the B, okay? So that's something like this. Okay? And then we're going to go a on, a back up on the A string. So we're going to go 11, 14, and then we're double stopping here on the D and G strings. We're going to go 11, 13, Sorry, double stop there, and then we're just going to go to the um, the thirteenth fret on the D string and hold the eleven on the G. So far, we've got. Down to a G. We're going to just grab now what would be the fifth fret on the high E at the same time, okay? I'm going to slide to the seven, back to the G, okay? So it's effectively a G to an A with, with the with the pinky there. Okay, so. Slide up to D, then slide down to C sharp minor. Okay, so it is worth noting that I pit um pit different like inflections or different notes throughout the whole time. Um, each time I play is kind of different as well. So if you're referring to the stat bit, this might be slightly different, just because you get lost in the moment. I'm knowing that I'm playing D there, and I got. I got these kind of notes at my disposal if I'm thinking D major, okay? Uh, again, look at that lesson that I referred to at the start. So, uh, from the G we go. A lot of, lot of fake outbreak. Yeah? So, from the D. And then we're going to do the same lick as the start. And then hit an open E. And then the, the position we got here is we on the D string we've got the fifth, on the G string we got the four, on the B string we got the fifth, yeah? You can get that little hammer on and off there. So that's that's a really like kind of pivotal part of the, of the song, I think. It takes you nicely back into the into the beginning, okay? So so far. And then we're gonna go. Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's hard to play in context. Uh. Ah. That's it, okay, so. So, slide in. One more time, really slowly. Okay, so that's the first one through. I'll just play one more time to show you exactly what I mean, okay? And we're gonna go straight back into the stab. We're gonna play a different way this way, okay? So we're gonna do the A the same. Back up to this part the same, okay? Then we're going to drop down to the G sharp here. 
okay? Which is the same as there, but we're just playing it there, okay? So we've got the G sharp minor there at the start. We're gonna take take it down lower. Okay, so. Yeah, and then we're gonna go. This this bit I really like, okay? So we're gonna essentially grab um, on the D uh, and the G string. We're gonna double stop, and then we're gonna grab a fret above on the B string. So this kind of shape, yeah? Okay, and then we're gonna just slide it, slide it up and back down, so. So, sorry. So after that G sharp minor there, we press slap. And then back fall down to the G sharp minor and we're gonna just run down a pentatonic scale. So, uh, I'm catching a double stop there on the D and G and hitting the G sharp minor and just falling down the scale and then we're quickly we're going to catch the G with our thumb that bit's a little bit tricky it does take a little while to get used to but you can get it if you practice okay I'll take you from the start of the second bit again okay that bit we know from the first part up to the D the same to the C sharp minor okay now you can when you're playing this you can like add your own little bits in so um, sometimes depending on how I'm feeling and what where the, where the song's taking me I will add, add bits in so I might go up to the D and go you know and all I'm doing there is thinking about the chord that I'm I'm highlighting so I know it's D major I'm going to the C, so I know that's a minor. And I'm just falling down. And that's how I add little bits on differently each time, you know? When there's some um, space in between the chord changes, it's nice to add the inflections there, or, or you know, the, the notes of your choice within, within the scale context. So I'll take you back to the start of the second bit now. want to learn that bit for the second time round, all we're going to do is we're going to grab a D, but we're going. And then when we get to the C sharp, we're going to bend up, catch the G, and release to the E, okay? So from the, from, from the G sharp minor. And it, it does actually fall really nice that lick, it, 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 you're kind of taking it to that E, right? And then the same. And now, like I said in the start, yeah, it's, I, I don't play that. When I'm playing on my own, I don't play it. Obviously, if I'm going to play in a band context, it's going to go in there, but when I'm playing on my own, I don't put it in there. I'll go to the next part, okay? Um, so let me get to where we are. Okay, this is really clever, okay? We're gonna go A, and I'm gonna signify a D. Yeah? catch A minor. So if you want to be really strict with it, you could go. Which he might actually do. Um, but I kind of found an easy way to do it for me, okay? So we're going to go play an A like that, and then just flatten your third finger to catch a D. Yeah? Catch an A minor across the hall. Yeah? And then we're going to slide it. Okay, now we 
does that uh, depending on where you're at in your time and all you might choose to do it two times three times whatever to do whatever feels right to you um, but then uh, we're going to get out of that with a little bit of a blues lick and going to do the turn around as such so I'll play it through and then we can kind of look at it afterwards okay so <laughs> Kind of bet that falls in a funny place in the song, you'll have to play around with it a bit to find it. But essentially, what I, I do there is I go so just simple pentatonic bending up to the air. Then we're going to fall into a major. So. after that really cool lick and then slide down to the G with the pinky G sharp A you can get carried away in that kind of stuff right um, so essentially the, the song is there, okay, um, in that kind of context that I've given you, um, very loosely. I, I really do suggest trying to look for the space in between the chord changes and think of what you can put in there yourself, you know? You'll hear a lot, of, a lot of shit along the way, do a lot of crap, but you've got to kind of filter your way through there to find the good notes, if that makes sense, okay? Um, that's at least the way that I play it. Now, there's a lot of other guys out there playing a shit ton better than me. Um, but that's how I play it. If you play it like this and put a wire in it, maybe put a little bit of delay at the end, um, like analog with a bit of a flutter on it, it can get super liquid. Um, and the trick to the song is to really try to flow through it. Um, the more you play it, the more you realize how actually easy it falls under your fingers and um, how kind of how genius it is in terms of the way the, the, the song's put together. Um, I think the important thing with probably Hendrix is he's he, he is well taught, he learned, he knows his craft, and he was not afraid to try things that perhaps others wouldn't, you know? It's, oh shit, we can't play that, it's not in the chord family. And she tried it, and it works in a beautiful way. Um, so I'm gonna play it one more time for a few. And we can kind, you can kind of hopefully, I'll play it as slow as I can so you can see what on my bed. I'll try and add some, in, some bits in as well, right? So. Okay, so um, I really hope you got something from this. Um, it was a really cool song to do, as I said. If you guys like this kind of video, you're gonna have to hit me up below and tell me because um, I'm gonna start doing more of these again. Uh, I enjoy doing these. I've got a setup currently that kind of works for me um, in terms of recording the audio. It's kind of easy to do. Um, so yeah, uh, this is just a guitar lesson on Electric Ladyland, and I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. This is Richie from Fred Junkies. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Peace.